Interface Video presents Fairfield Today. Brought to you by Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan, Fairfield Medical Center, Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities, the Frankie Smith Funeral Home, and Ohio University Lancaster. Welcome to Fairfield Today. My name is John Bosser. I'm the host of this program uh, once a month. The Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities sponsors Fairfield Today. And we're very proud to be at the Palatial Library <laughs> at Forest Rose School. Uh, mm -hmm. My guest today is Jody Blaze. She's the Director of Educational Services. Jody, welcome to the program. Thank you, John. Uh, Jody's been here before. Uh, now, we, you know, we were talking about, uh, about this a few minutes ago. This library now has, what, more than 5,000 volumes? More than 5,000 volumes. Okay. Absolutely. And I noticed we had, there's an entire section over there devoted to, to ducks. <laughs> but we, did, we couldn't find any Buckeye sections, so, uh, so I don't know. Well, you can donate that book. So we're here in the middle of <laughs> getting prepared for the national championship game between Ohio State and the Oregon Ducks, and but we won't, hope that's not a precursor. Sorry, yeah. Although once this airs, it will have been uh, old news, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you listen real closely, what do you hear right now? Silence. Total silence. Mm -hmm. That's because the white death and uh, the deep freeze is out there, and there's no school today. There's no school today. So we don't have to worry about letting people know, please don't come into the library now, because <laughs> we're, we're taping the TV show, but uh, it should be fun. So Forest Rose is always a, a fun place to come. Uh, it was certainly a fun place back in December. Oh, we had lots of activities going on. Yeah, we uh, last last month, we our program, emanated from here the uh, the annual rotary christmas party which is always fun the, the rotary brings uh, uh, a gift for each student here and mm -hmm. uh, feeds everyone and uh, we have a chance to bring in parents this year for the yes. for the first time really it was a lot a lot of awful lot of fun yeah this is actually the um third year that they've invited families to come in and also enjoy lunch and share in the celebration there's great entertainment yeah. good food and opportunities to to get families connected with the community members that have partners with us for so many years mm -hmm. i think 1924 something like that was yeah. when rotary started to um, partner with uh, the board of dd and and offer christmas to the children and to the young adults okay also had a visit uh, the annual your annual visit from uh the Missing Link Motorcycle the Club and Fry Link. Batty and all those guys yes. and uh, yes. uh, they brought books and they bring a, they also bring a gift, uh, a meaningful gift, not just a token, right? Little trinket. It's uh, they they bring buy an entire outfit, electronics. They this year um, staff said it's almost as if you knew these children. They picked perfect outfits for the students and everyone was really thrilled. And, and they love it, and they've been connected with us for many years as well. Very cool. They, they uh, well, both Rotary mm -hmm. uh, several years ago, and now uh, uh, the Missing Link Motorcycle Club have won awards mm -hmm. uh, sponsored by us. So that was uh, Missing Link last year uh, mm -hmm. received one of our Celebration of Possibility Awards, mm -hmm. which is coming up. The end of March is going to be here way too soon, as far <laughs> as I'm concerned. Uh, but uh, uh, we're, we're excited about that. We're in the middle of uh, uh, award nominations, mm -hmm. so make sure you get your nomination in by the end of next week. Uh, so we're, uh, we're real excited about that. Our guest is going to be Kathy Buckley, who's a very refreshing uh, comedian who is hearing impaired, and she has a great message and, uh, as well as a very funny message. So nice. We're, we're, we're looking forward to, to, nice. to, to hearing from her. And, uh, and of course, to recognize all of our award winners and, and have a little bit of fun with music and celebrate things. So, okay. what else happened in, uh, in, in, in December? You had your annual Christmas show. 
We did the have our preschool. Christmas program with preschool, really well attended, families, grandparents, friends, um, and their darling. And the cuteness factor goes from here up to here during that day. It's fabulous. It's fabulous. So a, a lot has been going on. The, the other exciting thing that happened is that we did open the time capsule right before Christmas. Perfect segue. That's what I was going to go into All right. next. Good. Good. So tell me about the the time capsule. Tell me why it was put in, when it was put in, those types well, of things. Well, the space that we're in now, which is currently our library, is actually what used to be the office when this was the front of the school. And when the office was moved to the back of the building, we took out a safe and there was a big hole in the wall. So we um, decided to put time capsule information inside there. We cemented it up covered it up with a plaque and uh, left it for 20 years. So in 1994, okay. we left a time capsule to be opened in 2014. Okay. So we invited um, as many of our retired staff, old students as we could to come back to school for the opening because none of us could recall what we might have put in 20 years ago. And it was very enlightening. Um, as you can see on the table here, we think we're going to phone this in. This is one of the things that we found. is a phone back from the time period, the Princess phone, which some of our children today do not know what it is, but it doesn't even have the At least it doesn't have a dial, dial. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's what I remember, is a rotary dial black phone. So we were talking about how different things are that we now all have computers in our pockets with our smartphones. All of the information of the world is right now in front of our... Which makes some of the things that we used to have kind of <laughs> obsolete. For example, the yellow pages from 93, 94. We really don't use these anymore. We look things up and now it's right on here our on. phones. Uh, yep. So, and at that time in 1994, we actually didn't have a library. The books that were in this building were brought by the bookmobile in a couple of boxes. And we have built this to over 5,000 volumes. Um, a couple of the groups that we talked about earlier, Rotary and Missing Links, have helped us grow this in that they have offered to provide their speakers for their programs to mm -hmm. donate a book in their speaker's name instead of giving them a mug or a pen. So we have an, an entire uh, stash of books that's been donated by Rotary, Missing Links. The and it's really kind of cool because to get back to the Rotary thing, they would try to find a book that correlated with whatever the speaker's message was that yes. day. Yes, yes. So. And did a very good job with that. Mm -hmm. So we actually have built this to over 5,000 volumes, which is really exciting. A lot of these have been donated by families, too, um, as their children have grown through their books, that they donate them here. So we're excited to be in this space, old office that it was, and to kind of reminisce about the, the changes that have occurred. Now, let me get back to the books a little bit, mm -hmm. and then to the library. How, how often is it used? And oh, daily. for what types of, you know, I mean, just talk about the the way that you use the library as mm -hmm. part of your curriculum. Mm -hmm. It, it uh, helps to enhance every curriculum topic or unit that we're doing. Mm -hmm. So we have the books categorized by, you know, um, holidays, you know, certain things about animals. As you pointed out, you actually found the duck the ducks, of series, course. but not much on Buckeyes. I'm going to dig for that <laughs> later. So that it's easy for everyone to find, even, even children, to come and locate books. And we think there's nothing more important to put in the hands of children than books and literature. So it is not only correlated with the curriculum that we use, but it is an opportunity for folks to come down and use this space to have some shared reading time with kids individually or in small groups. We also have a number of activities, learning activities, where there are materials here. This provides another quiet space for um, staff and students to come to do learning that's outside the classroom. Okay, cool. The other thing I think that this phone represents, this was used as, as to teach kids how to make phone calls uh -huh. and obviously call 911 and things like that. Uh -huh. At the time, in 1994, there were no telephones in the rooms. No. Now the room, of course, each room has a phone as far as so that there is you know, more of a safety issue. Mm -hmm. If you get, need to get a hold of a teacher or someone has a, has a problem with a student, they can, they can call and, and don't have to worry about running down the hall or anything. So Absolutely. That, that's, that's certainly we've advanced there as well made huge changes yeah yes now we are we are going to replace that time capsule at mm -hmm. some point in mm -hmm. january or february and mm -hmm. uh so a lot of what we're talking about now the newer technology is going to be placed 
inside that new time capsule, mm -hmm. and we'll see where we are. Uh, I know I yes. certainly won't be here in 20 years, but uh, well, maybe who knows? You can't That's tell. That's right. Yeah, you, you can't tell. Know. I plan on it. No, good, good, good for so, you. Good for you. We may actually put some of the items that came out of the time capsule back in the next one. So if we do it for another 20 years, it will be something that's 40 years old and, okay. and um, even be more significant. Cool. Well, let's let's talk about some more things that, that, that were in there and, okay. con and contrast them with what's going on today. Some of the things that um, were in here, these, of course, were all submitted by classroom teachers. This was something that we would have used to help children communicate. Okay. It's pictures that they could make some choices about what they were eating. Yeah, I would like a cookie, please. So this is a simplistic um, version of an ability to make a choice. Mm -hmm. We did also use at the time some um, early developing switches where students could activate something by pushing the switch. It might be something that could help them communicate, but it would be just a short phrase. Um, this is probably the area that we've come the greatest distance with in that we now have very sophisticated communication devices. And we've talked about this before because this has been one of the main initiatives in the last couple of years with the school is that we realize that our, our students need ways to have a voice and to communicate their thoughts, their dreams, their hopes. This technology is so exciting. We've really unlocked things for so many children. And we use iPads in every room. Kids are fascinated by technology, just like every other child in the world. Um, there are games to be played, but it makes learning more exciting and more fun. It certainly makes things more portable mm -hmm. for students so that they always have a way with them to communicate. We communicate in many, many ways that we sign, we use oral language, and we also still rely on some pictures, but we're more in tune to picture symbols that correlate to what we're doing on the communication devices. Now, of course, we also use iPads for the teachers yes. for communication. Documentation uh, of what they're they, doing. They each get their progress. email. There's another thing. There was no way to, to even. We didn't have email think of what email would be. We yeah. didn't. We didn't have anything to put in there to contrast what mm -hmm. the technology would become. Well, I guess we could have. We could have put. Uh, there were probably notes in there and mm -hmm. and things. And then and, and now we have. I think in '94 we weren't really certain what was going to be obsolete. Yeah. So. And, and, and what? Uh, who knows what's going to be like in. In 20 years. Some things have not changed. Things gone exponentially that they've... Yes. Yeah. Um, they actually put dryer lint in there because we do a lot of laundry here, washing blankets and clothing towels and we from, still have from the pool, and we still have that. Um, one of the we things, maybe have less less lint because we don't have as much cotton anymore. But, uh, Absolutely. <laughs> I don't know that we have less lint, all in all. But I will tell you that the lint didn't didn't last 20 years. It was you know dust. Dust. So that's the good news, there I guess, go. is that lint goes back into into the earth. There you go. So um, biggest changes were these. We we did find some old curricular things which were very outdated. This was um, the State of Ohio Curriculum Guide for Moderately Mentally Retarded Learners. As you know, um, even that language has changed as we become very people first in our language. And um, we now refer to mental retardation as intellectual disability. Mm -hmm. So not just the language, but the what we know that works to help support students. And it has made a difference in the gains that we make. But I think the exciting things that we saw with the pictures of what was shared, the yearbooks that were there, is that there was love and fun and play and learning taking place. Even if the technology was different, there are some things that don't mm -hmm. change. Now there happened, just happened to be a famous person in that yearbook. Is yes, there, there does, because my 23-year-old daughter was in preschool. So when I opened this from Miss um, Barb Schwartz's class, of course, I was confronted with my daughter um, being enrolled as a typical peer. And at playing that on time. the playground. So it was exciting. Okay. Exciting. Uh, can you pull pull the yearbook out for a second? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this I think was pretty cool. This is actually good. For, goes back a little bit more than 94. This was the 91-92 smoke signal. Mm -hmm. um, we need to go back to having a yearbook. Yeah, we've you know. just been talking about that. Yeah. I'm working with Life Touch, who are our, um, our photographers, to work on yeah. that. Good. Roy, Roy Johnson was in your position at the time. Uh -huh. uh, Roy didn't come back for the opening. He did not. But it was really cool to see the staff that came back uh, 
the, the day we opened the time capsule. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and some of the things that they talked about and some of the information that they shared. Uh, and I think it's really kind of cool that through all those years, the staff has stayed very a closely knit group. They have. There's still a group of retired staff that get together monthly for dinners and catching up and supporting each other. And they've always been very supportive of this program. They come back often for Thanksgiving dinner, but they were all out filming with their phones yeah. as we took things out, and, and they were the ones that could remember it. It was new yeah. to the younger group, but the uh, folks well, that folks, been folks around, like Becky Bales and yeah. Sally Grimm. Yeah. Who else? Gay Grandstaff came back. He was here, uh, Betty Flynn. Uh, yes. Linda Hinton, who only retired just a couple years ago. Yes, but, uh, yes. And, and one of the exciting things we found um, was actually a videotape. And we still have cassette recorders so we could play that, that VCR. Um, didn't, it didn't weather well, but it was um, very, very interesting to, to walk through the day. Because yeah. Steve Hopkins, who was the curriculum coordinator, kind of took us on a tour from the outside of the building into the building and um, showed people at work, um, you know, signing in on their timesheets where now we use an electronic time clock system, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So it, it kind of highlighted some of the differences, but a lot of the similarities yeah. that And I think we're, I'd, I'd like to, for us to, to do that for the next one as well. Yeah. To go through and yes. do it. And we'll, and we'll make it, we'll burn a DVD. Or we'll, we'll burn put, a DVD. We'll put it on a, uh, on a flash drive or something yes. and put it in there. Yes. So tell us we, a little bit about how the classrooms have changed. How the classrooms have changed. Well, again, I think part of the changes with that have been that there have been changes in the students that attend here. Mm -hmm. We have pictures of our basketball team and our cheerleaders and kids doing woodworking in shop. And there was a time when we served 150 students. So we did um, have larger classrooms, less staff. As the years have gone by, those students have been incorporated more into the public school, which is the intent of the law, that students be out educated in the least restrictive environment, meaning the school district and classroom that they would attend if they did not have a disability. So the students that we're serving now are, are very um, multiply handicapped. Mm -hmm. um, they are generally on the spectrum of autism, may have some behavioral challenges. We have many students that are medically fragile. So the needs of the students are greater which means they require more support um, as far as paraprofessionals and therapists, et cetera, just to um, do their daily living mm -hmm. skills and, and to um, be supportive. But I think that's one of the exciting things about Forest Rose is we have such a strong teaming concept and that staff is always in a learning mode. They're always being supported by therapists. This is not a school where a therapist comes in, does a half an hour therapy, and goes out the door. It's constantly teaming and collaborating, pulling parents into the process. So we do see exciting changes with students. And of course, the technology that we're exposing kids to now, um, I think has, has helped us to continue to raise the bar mm -hmm. as far as you know, we're not putting limits we are helping them to discover their personal genius and to to see the, the the response on their faces when we're getting their message and they can make choices. One of the things we laugh about is that we very consistently um, put no on here. That's one of the most important things any of you who have toddlers at home know. No is a good thing. And, and for a student to be able to say, no, I don't feel like it or get out of my face um, gives them great pleasure mm -hmm. and also is very valuable in saying, I'm done right now. I need to back off of that. Okay. So, been exciting stuff. Of course, there's now there's a computer in every classroom. Yeah, and actually a couple, so that you know students can be working, um, and teachers can be working on the computers as well, as well as iPads in every room. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to take a quick break. Okay. Uh, when we come back, we'll uh, we'll talk a bit more about the time capsule, and look a little forward to what's going on uh, for the rest of this year. Welcome back to Fairfield today. Uh, to reset, we are in uh, Forest Row Schools Library, talking about the, the, the time capsule that we opened from 20 years ago, uh, talking about some of the things that are going into the new time capsule. Uh, you know, what are some other things that you think we'll put in the new one, uh, kind of contrasting what was happening 20 years ago mm -hmm. and looking forward to the next? Mm -hmm. 
for the next 20 um, years? I, I believe we actually may have a communication device that is no longer functional that we would put in, but um, since these usually range from six to twelve thousand dollars, we wouldn't put one that was yeah. valuable to us in there. But I think right. that's a neat connection that we'll share. Um, we've had so much response to our Brave video that really showcases yes. some of our students. We thought that would be an exciting thing to put in. Um, we probably won't add in some dryer lint, even though that's still something that, that is very representative of us. So we've kind Maybe of left that up to the teachers the, yeah. and classrooms <laughs> to decide what's important for them or what they'd like to share. But we kind of love the idea that the, the videotape was a message from the past. Maybe a Tide pen. You can so, put one of those. A Tide, tide pen. <laughs> so we're open for suggestions. We would have you phone it in on the Princess <laughs> phone. But, um, yeah, we're... <laughs> We'll be making some decisions about that, and then it'll be a secret for 20 more years. Okay. Uh, so what, as we're now almost quite, not quite halfway, but getting mm -hmm. close to halfway through the year, mm -hmm. what, uh, what do you have planned for the rest of the year? What else is going on? Anything? Well, we have um, a new teacher in the senior room, Amy LaSalle. She's actually been with us for a number of years as an educational assistant, and Amy has always done a good job. She just finished her degree, and it was such a timely. We had an opening that we were able to bring her in. So she's got really exciting things planned for our senior students. We're very engaged in getting them connected with the community, getting kids from the community actually entering mm -hmm. our program. So we've seen that to the point that we are really making a focus of attention on getting connected um, with our kids in their local districts. Now there's a difference as well. Mm -hmm. uh, 20 years ago, uh, they may have thought about the discovery process mm -hmm. and, and things like transition but it wasn't quite, didn't quite have the, the, the person-centered focus that it does now. Right. There's a little bit more structure really kind of cool. to this. And I think people were always very person-centered focused, but didn't have a, a format to call right. it that. And, and really the tools that the discovery process and Imagine have put in our hands really gives us a concerted way to look at what is it that you love? What is it that you're good at? How can we help support that? And then we can document employability skills so that before kids are ready to transition to adult services, we already have a lot of data mm -hmm. that shows us what might be an option for them in community supported employment or um, actually employability in, in the public sector. Okay. Uh what else is going on here? I mean, we you know we obviously have our our, our, our big focus on uh, on technology, uh -huh. on on getting uh, the kids who need to have augmentative communication devices to get those in their hands, uh -huh. get them working with them sooner, uh -huh. uh, so that they can be. Right. Our, our, our next focus of, of the next few months becomes alternate assessment, and the state has changed the way we assess whether kids are, are working their way through the curriculum. So the teachers go through extensive training. It is something that is actually um, done in a standardized way and reported via computer. So much like the proficiency test that all kids respond to its accountability for no child left behind it does take a couple of months to assess kids mm -hmm. so as the business of the day goes goes through teachers will also be pulling students aside to complete this alternate assessment um, we are looking forward to partnering with some homeschool kids and some gifted groups and some art activities we're partnering with social and art and and, and clay on main to um, do those collaborative kind of projects. So that's something that we're doing in the spring coming up, and then we're just looking forward to some really good warm weather so okay. we can be a little bit more out there. Okay. Well, Jody, thank you so much for joining me. Thank uh, you, John. This has been a lot of fun. One thing I want to talk about is that uh, uh, recently, the or this week, the week after we're taping this, uh, is the reopening of the uh, what used to be called the zone at Ohio University Lancaster and now it's it's, it's going to be called the Bobcat Bistro and we are still involved uh, for years the last maybe six years or so uh, we operated the zone this the student lounge at OUL and it had a very limited uh, amount of, of food offering for, for for kids but they wanted to keep try and keep students on campus uh, to make things more efficient and uh, they they they've uh, used their 
uh, going with the uh, Office of Ancillary Services there at uh, Ohio University in Athens. And so it reopened as the Bob, uh, Bobcat Bistro uh, with things like burgers and a pizza oven so they make they can make uh, made to order pizzas, uh, salad bar, a lot of more healthy offerings and they're going to to evolve and uh, and make some changes based on what students are wanting. Uh, so that we're real excited to be, be, be a partner with them continually and to to, uh, to kind of be able to provide more training to uh, to our, our people that, that, that come to work there and they're better prepared to go to go out in, in, into the community and have community jobs in the food service area. So uh, until uh, until next week or next month, uh, this is John Bosser for Fairfield Today. Interface Video presents Fairfield Today. Brought to you by Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan, Fairfield Medical Center, Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities, the Frankie Smith Funeral Home, and Ohio University Lancaster.